Well, it's a gorgeous day, as you can see. A little windy out, and now I'm getting the seats off that maple, and it's super windy, actually. But anyway, I'm going to paint this uh, jam. I just got to tape off the furnace, the clock, cover a few things up, and uh, we'll be ready to start mixing some paint up. I got this. I'm going to paint this edge here so i put the window down further i masked the window off and put it down so i can uh, get that edge too when i paint the the jam so we're gonna let me get going here well, i got two coats on it and i'm gonna put a final one on the jam because i got a little heavy on the paint and got a couple little runs i was painting down in this wire channel with the fan narrowed out and somehow i just got it but you know that's true to ford you know i'm just playing a ford and i got the underneath all sprayed that's kind of a bite without it jacked up getting in under there but um the door jam is the last on the car itself of the major painting other than the top which is no big deal and uh got this it up. I painted this edge here like I did on the other door. That's where that trim goes on just to prevent any future rust. This came out really nice. It's a little bit of a paint reaction happened right there. And uh, I'm not too worried about it. That's where the hinge bolt's on so you won't even see it anyway. And, uh, but yeah, it's I might, I'm, I'm not going to put any more paint on the door, that's, that's finished, two coats. I'm only going to put a third coat on the jam because I want to, uh, I'm going to let it dry a half hour, 45 minutes, and give it a shot so you don't see that run line in there. I mean, the paint's pretty smooth, but you can see a metallic run, and I can just mist a, a coat on that and correct that just you know, I mean, it's the door jam, the trim, the the molding, you know, there's that one piece that goes over there, and then that sill molding comes down to here, so you only see this little bit right down here in this part, and this part's all good. There is a little bit of runs there, but Ford had some pretty good runs there, and uh, it's, it's cool out. It's only 64, and uh, these little areas, you can see it's just now starting to... Can you see how, yeah, it's still coming off on my gloves, so it's still, let me uh, get a finger here that doesn't have paint on the tip. See how it's still on my glove? That's still too wet. It's coming off the tape and sticking to my glove. I want it to where I can touch it, and it feels sticky like sticky tape, but doesn't stick to my glove. And then I'll uh, just blow a quick coat on that, and that'll hide all, uh, you know, the paint most of it anyway not all of it but most of it it's starting to flow out it's not actually not looking as bad as it it was as it flows out but it'll look fine it's a door jam ford had a lot more runs than that so it's gonna be fine all right i put a final coat on this because you know the metallic was all messed up looking from the runs and that totally straightened it out and I'm gonna call it done. So I'm gonna let this dry a couple hours and take the tape off and then I can worry about the convertible top frame will be the next thing I paint on the car itself and then the painting on the car itself will be 100% other than, you know, I don't really paint the skin of the door and reshoot the, the trunk lid, but I'll do that probably in the next few days. I wanna let this paint dry I don't want a mask on that fresh paint on the jam here, you know, I got a mask around here. So I'll let it dry uh, two or three days and I'll uh, mask that. I'll, you know, I got to go up to my dad and some do yard work and got a few things I got to take care of. So while I'm doing that, this can dry. So hopefully by next weekend, I can paint this that maybe before the weekend paint the trunk lid in the door and uh i can just back this out to do that so i don't have to cover it all up 
Yeah, there's a good, it's windy out. There's a good breeze blowing through here. That'll help move the solvents out and allow the paint to dry quicker. If you, no, no dirt appears to be blowing in the door. I'm going to close it as soon as all the uh, smells. In fact, I'm going to close it right now. I think it's aired out enough in here um, just to keep dust out. I was going to open that window and opt it out of it, you know, just to, because stuff would blow in. And uh, But I think this is going to look super, super happy with the door jam. Looks really good. One thing I wanted to show is how the, what happens with the mixed paint that you don't use. This was from when I painted the rear quarter panels. So it's been sitting here, oh, however long that's been, with a lid on it. So let me see if I can get this lid off. I mean, so I got the lid off and you can see in there it's like a, it's like a jello. See how it, see how it hardens up? So that's what happens to the acrylic enamel after the hardener's in it. That's why you gotta discard it or throw it away. You know, that little bit of paint is all waste. That would have probably painted the door jam on the car if I, you know, had it ready and masked when I painted the rear quarters. But just kind of wanted to show you what, that's why you never put this paint back in your gallon or anything. You always, always discard your mixed paint. Just kind of wanted to show that. When I mixed it, I put that much, no, I sorry, I used this, this, uh, I use more, but I put that much paint, that much reducer, and that much hardener into this jar. It's eight parts paint, three parts <coughs> reducer, one part hardener. I just thought, you know, people might be interested in seeing, you know, look at the metallic, and look where I scratched the metallic with the screwdriver, but you can definitely see the metallic settled. And, uh, yeah, so that's the the blacks and all the colors that make the green in there. It says on the can what all's in the paint. The mixing formula's right on the can. There's the... That's what's in the paint. Makes it the color it is, if you're interested. And I did just uh, Mickey Mouse cover the trunk lid, you know, I just try and save some sanding work on it. Yeah, things been growing crazy around here. Ladybug right there on the peonies. Oh, look, they are starting to blow down. The, the whirly gig's kind of sheltered here, but it does go. It's really windy. I'd probably be going like mad if it wasn't so, so sheltered. anyway there just kind of a little bit around the, the bleeding hearts are spectacular this year too things going a lot of Irish sir too I'm just adding a few videos around the yard for my dad look at the poppies look at the buds on them they're enormous this is all going to be poppies planted a bunch of seeds in here kind of this this is almost done flowering you can see some of the flowers there there we go all the masking tape is off looks really nice look at that do you see a joint there no that's because of the way I like to mask there is a little mark there, but it's not a sharp edge. And I'll just take my finger with, that's lightly sanded right there, but I'll just take my finger with some rubbing compound and that will not show when I'm done. This is, this is not repainted. That's factory paint. This is new paint. So you can see there's really no difference in color it's pretty good match and uh, the rocker panel came out good painted right to the underside of it 
I might have to paint this black. It might look funny once the trim's on here and you stand back and look at the car and this is green. From the factory, this was uh, low gloss black under here. And I may have to do that again. I'll wait until I get the trim on and then look at it on. And if I do, I'll mask it back here. Just paint this edge here because, I don't know, I just kind of like that. You can put a coat of wax on it and keep it nice. And uh, really, really pleased with the way the thing came out. I can get the rest of the paint buffed out a little bit and get this all everything a little buff and... And I think it's going to look really good. Get the rest of it painted, of course. The door and the trunk lid. This really hasn't changed any since I pulled the tape off, but looks really good. It's it's uh, dry to the touch now. It's been oh an hour and a half since I I laid the paint on, and that that uh, flowed out pretty good. You can still see a little bit right in there, but. Like I say, the hinge is there. You won't even see that. This was, this was that part I welded up. You know where the the skin was welded to that steel. You can see the some of the joint there. So that won't uh, that won't even be visible unless you get down on your hands and knees and look up in there when the door is open. It's gonna make a fun, real fun summer cruiser. Looking forward to getting it done and taking it for a ride. Oh, and by the way, that whirly gig I just gave you a glance of a moment ago, that was my great-grandfather's. I remember my grandpa's backyard. My dad remembers when it was in his. And we suspect it's around 90 years old. I did replace the uh, propeller, make a new propeller. But the rest of it's pretty much all the original whirly gig. I had to do some repairs to it and paint it. But it looks nice out in the garden. I do get a lot of comments on why I paint my cars the way I do when I why I don't paint the whole door when I paint the jam. Well, if I hung the door and sprayed it, you know, then you're laying on your back or something trying to get this, you know, make sure you get paint down in there and you know, making sure I get paint here to really get the the inner jam of the door properly. You really need to paint it separately from the skin of the door. You really need to do it the way, this way. You know, I mean, if I had a proper spray booth and everything, maybe it'd be a different story. I could paint everything. But the way I do it, and over the years of my experience of doing it, you know, I can set the door this way. I can see really well to paint, get, make sure I get paint in there. That's why these cars rotted out in here back in the day was because well you saw when i took the car apart you know there's this primer here they didn't get it because these you know were probably hanging vertically and they, they didn't get enough paint down here so the the body would rust and uh that's why i kind of like to paint my doors and panels the inner side of the panels off the car like i did the trunk lid the hood the other door the inner fenders, the inner inside of the front fenders are painted. It just comes out a lot neater. And uh, I turned some of the lighting off in the garage, but you know, I just, yeah, I covered this stuff back up again too. So it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't um, get overspray but you can see you know how nice that looks and that comes out so much better when you can do that and a lot of my new subscribers may have not have gone back and watched some of these videos where I did that kind of stuff and uh let's get some of the stuff out of here so I don't the battery's disconnected as you can see I don't I always disconnect it when I put sheets under the hood I learned the hard way once once is all it takes to start a car with sheets under the hood you learn really quick. Disconnect the battery so it won't start until you open the hood and see the sheets. But, um, you know, that's why I paint these things off the car on sawhorses the way I do. It just, you just get a better job. And now I'm going to hang the door vertically when I paint the skin. In fact, I was thinking I might even just bolt it back on the car and then just mask everything off. But, you know, that plastic was real easy to drag over the car and 
you know, really saved a lot of time, saved hours of, of masking. Just, I don't know, I'll, I may not, I'll probably back it out, it'll be easier. I can, I can uh, take some hooks and, you know, hang it from the ceiling. And the trunk lid I'm going to hang too. I'm going to hang them both to, to spray them because I think they'll come out better. But that came out really, really nice. Little factory run right there. But yeah, it looks good. So that's why I paint anyway. That I just wanted to add that little tidbit because I do get a lot of comments. Why don't you just paint everything at once? Well... It just comes out nice, you know, you get a nice coat, you don't get over spray, you don't miss little areas. It just looks good. And then, you know, once it's back together and on the car, it'll look amazing. It's starting to look like it hasn't been sitting for 44 years. Here, I'll just stand back and get a whole side view. Yeah, it doesn't look... Uh, you know, pretty look pretty bad. The paint and everything looked pretty bad before. It's starting to look good now. Look looking, looking more like a a new car than a one that sat for all those years. For 43 years it sat parked. Here's kind of a rear view without uh, the door or something blocking the rear of the car, and it even looks so nice when you look down underneath the car. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up. I know it's gonna be a short video, but I just wanted to put a video up anyway to show the paintwork on the door jams and that I am still getting work done on the Galaxy. If you like this video, hit the like button. It'll definitely help. Like I say, the more views, the more money I make, then I can put a top on this car with that money. That's my goal is to put, the, put a new top on this car with the money I make off my YouTube videos for the past couple months, few months. So hopefully I'll get a lot of views, share the video, like it, do whatever it takes to get it more views. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you want to see this car finished up, subscribe to my channel. And thank you for watching.